if you're planning to buy the Surface Laptop 7, don't buy the wrong model. We are neurotic laptop enthusiasts here, so we bought all three of them. We have the cheaper 13-inch with X+, Plus, the 13-inch with X Elite, and the 15-inch with X Elite. There is no 15-inch model with X+, Plus, by the way. Anyway, we did find something pretty interesting, and since I value your time, I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing to find out. It turns out the 13-inch with the X Elite processor, which is the one that we've seen reviewed the most, and is the one that we assumed is best, is probably the worst one to buy. It's a trap! It costs several hundred dollars more than the X Plus for minimal extra performance and worse battery life. In fact, if you want an X Elite processor in a Surface laptop, you really have to buy the 15-inch version to unleash that extra performance. Now, if you want to know our full thoughts on all aspects of these Surface Laptop 7s, that's in our comparison video with the MacBook Airs. We'll link that one down below. And if you're not sure which Snapdragon laptop you should buy, we have a big roundup coming. So get subscribed as that video is going to be published soon. This video is really to highlight which Surface Laptop you should buy if that's the laptop you're going for. Let's talk performance. To keep our comparisons fair, each model is equipped with the same 16GB of memory. The X Plus has 10 CPU cores, the X Elite has 2 additional cores, and it can run its cores faster. Let's start with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. Both the 13-inch and 15-inch laptops with X Elites perform very well, and almost identically, ahead of the X Plus version and competing laptops with Intel processors. But this is far from the full story. Let's switch to Cinebench, which tests the laptops when their processors are maxed out. You can see that the 13-inch Surface with X Elite performs only marginally better than the X Plus version, and quite a bit behind the 15-inch Surface with the same processor. This is because the 15-inch feeds its processor more power, which is likely due to its improved cooling solution, as it is a larger laptop. In fact, the 15-inch version even comes with a larger 65W charger. Both the 13-inch surfaces come with a smaller 39W one. Since hardware info does not work on these new ARM laptops yet, we measured power draw from the wall. We then subtracted 7 watts for the rest of the laptop. We came to that number by looking at the delta of CPU package power to power draw from the wall for similar laptops. And if you've noticed that our math does not add up, it is because our Surface's 39W charger actually pulls 41. When we look at performance while on battery, it is good news for the Surface Laptop 15. The extra power fed to its processor and required by its larger display is negated by its larger battery. That's why when running Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes, all these laptops ended up having around the same battery remaining. However, when we switch gears to casual use, you can see a difference. There is a cost of putting the more powerful and power-hungry X Elite processor in the smaller 13-inch laptop. You lose a good amount of battery. Those extra two CPU cores of its X Elite processor require power. This is a reason to get the 13-inch version of the X Plus instead. Now, when it comes to heat you feel, all three laptops felt around the same in light and heavy use. That is, they remain very cool for light tasks, but the moment you run anything that requires performance, they feel noticeably warm. Even something as simple as a conference call will make these laptops heat up. When it comes to fan noise, again, all three of them were around the same. Quiet for light use and around 45 decibels for performance tasks. This is noticeable, but not overly loud as far as laptops fans go. For graphics, they all have the same integrated graphics, and no surprises, they ended up performing around the same. That also goes for their MPUs. So if you're interested in graphics or AI, you could again just save money and buy the 13-inch version with the X+. And on that note, let's talk pricing. As configured, the 13-inch X Plus is $1,200, the X Elite is $200 more at $1,400, and the 15-inch with X Elite is $1,500. Overall, given what we've just shown you, we feel that the 13-inch X Elite model it makes the least sense, especially when you consider the ideal users for these laptops, people doing light tasks like office applications, web browsing, as well as some of what I'd call mid-level performance tasks, like programming a React website. In these tasks, you're unlikely to notice the difference between the X Plus and the X Elite. And since the X Plus costs $200 less and lasts longer on battery, we think that's the one that most people should buy. If you do want a higher performing Surface laptop, we recommend just skipping over the 13-inch X Elite and buying the 15-inch instead. Finally, I do want to say one closing thought. Given that we have three of these laptops in, we did notice some build quality differences. Our Surface Laptop 13 with X Elite, it did not sit completely flat on a desk. And our 13 inch with X Plus was an ever so slightly lighter blue than the X Elite unit, and I didn't think it looked quite as good. As mentioned, if you are wondering what we think of the rest of the Surface Laptop 7, it is in our Surface vs MacBook Air video, which I've linked below.
Overall, whether you're shopping for yourself or someone else, make sure to check out our website. That's where you'll find all the laptops that we recommend for various types of users and where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.